Hello there all, welcome back to EOS Acro. In this video, we are going to take a break from creating the table digital asset. Instead, we are going to spend some time understanding a few things about polygons. So let's get started. So now let me start by hiding our digital asset and dropping in a geometry node. Now diving into this node, we have a file node which I don't need, so I'll delete it. What I want to start with is by creating two polygons using the curve tool. One of them I'll create in the clockwise direction and the other in the anti-clockwise direction. So before we go take the tool, make sure you're in context or you'll be jumped out of the geo node. Now taking the curve, I'll draw one polygon in the clockwise direction, close it and end. I'll take another curve tool and again this time I go in the reverse direction and close it. I have two of these, I need to merge them together. So I'll take the merge node, select both of these connect them there and turn on the display flag, get rid of the template. Now, I have two polygons in my viewport which I've just created. They look almost exactly the same visually, but let's just say I want to use an extrude node on these polygons. I'll drop in an extrude and now if I want to translate them in any particular axis and move them, you can see there is a huge difference. One of them is moving up, whereas the other is moving down. The problem which is occurring is that of the normals. Each of these primitives has something called a normal which tells which direction the primitive is facing. If we don't pay attention to that, we might get into trouble along the way. So I want to address those issues today. So going back to my merge node, to look at these normals, all I have to do is turn on normals on my primitive. If I turn this on, you should be able to see a very small pink line here on the polygon but it's very small so let me go to the display options here I have a normal scale option I'll go increase that now you can see that the normals for these polygons are facing in exactly opposite directions and when you extrude the extrude is nothing but making use of the normals to pull the polygon in that direction so you can see I have a 10 unit movement in Z axis and Z by default aligns to normals when you're using SOP operators. Now if I go take this in the reverse direction in the negative Z you can see it goes reverse of the normals itself and you can see all the normals this time are facing inside my objects whereas they were facing on the outside previously. So what we want to make sure is that most times when we create our digital assets or models the normals should be facing the outside of the model not on the inside of the model. This can give you loads of problems using while shading or other issues while using cookie nodes and other operations. So this was about normals. Now we are going to see how we can use simple expressions and small particular nodes to reverse the normals to make sure they're facing the same direction. Now the first step for reversing polygons facing the wrong way is isolating them. So let's see what kind of expression we can use to do this. Also first let me start by showing you about text port. So I'll put in a new panel called text port this is basically a head script command line in Houdini where a lot of commands can be run but the only command I want to show you right now is called the X help. Using the help X help command you can put in any expression you have in Houdini and it gives you a lot of help documentation on exactly how to make use of it. And the best thing about it is you don't have to have the help documentation open all the time. So right now the expression I'm going to use to isolate primitives facing the wrong way is called the prim function. And I'll just type in X help prim hit enter and it gives me a lot of details about how to use it. So first off the prim function is going to give me a float value as an output. Also first I need to give in the surface node which has to be evaluated, the primitive which has to be evaluated, what about the primitive has to be evaluated and inside that if it's a vector which exact index of that vector has to be evaluated. Apart from that you have a couple of examples on how to use this. So let's actually go ahead and see how to make use of it right now. I'll go ahead delete the extrude node we have and back on the merge node. The merge name is too generic so let me rename it to obj. And now I'll go ahead and start by adding a particular node called the primitive node. I'm not sure if I had used the point node before but primitive node is basically a soft node which lets you edit 
attributes or add elements to only primitives or it helps you work only with primitives. So in this primitive node, I'm going to make use of it to visualize the reversal of the faces using colors. So I'll go to the attributes for colors and tell add color. Let me hold control and shift and click on the color so all the expressions which are there for color are gone. And now I'm going to make use of this prim function to evaluate the normals and put that normal value into one of the colors. And because we are working with y-axis, let me go ahead and put the value into the y-axis itself. So here I'll go press Alt E to open my expression editor. And here I'm going to use the expression which is prim open brackets. First I need to give a surface node which needs to get evaluated and that is my obj node. So here I'll just put that in. And next thing I want evaluated here if you go back to textport is the floating point primitive number. So the number for the primitive. If I turn on the numbering for the primitives you can see that there's numbers on them 0 and 1. But the problem is I don't want only one single primitive evaluated. I want all of them. So for that I need to tell $PR. That means go through every single primitive and evaluate whether or not this is happening or just give me the value for every single one. So let me actually get rid of the number there. Next, uh, the next thing I need to give is the actual attribute I want to work with. So the attribute I want to be working with is the normals. So in Houdini that's very simple it's just called a capital N. So I'll just put that in quotes. Because it is a string I need to put that in quotes. Next, I need to give a floating point attribute index, so a number for the index I'm going to use. We already know that the normal is made up of three different axes, x, y, and z, so it's a vector. What I'm concerned with is a y-axis of that vector, which means it's the second value of the index, and indices start from 0, so x is 0, y is 1, and z is 2. So because I'm interested in y-axis, I need to give it a number 1 and close the bracket. We have finished with our expression. If I hit accept, you should see the primitive facing downwards is now pink. And because the expression is being evaluated here, I can go to my curve, reverse it and immediately see whether or not it's working. And as you can see, it is working. I can easily change the color by just reversing the polygon. But another problem right now is that this primitive is getting the value, the color value, but it's just it's taking it directly from the normals and because the normal at this instant is facing downwards the color is also facing downwards meaning it's going negative so if I go to my details view to my primitives you can see the color in green is minus one for this one so it's not just going to zero it's not removing green it's actually subtracting green from black which is not possible in real world but in computer it can do it which might lead to some complications during compositing so we need to set up a different statement which just tells see whether or not it is facing a particular direction also, before we go ahead, some, might, some of you might find it useful. If I take a transform and connect it to one of these nodes and start rotating with these faces, you will see that once the y-axis normal starts facing above the plane, the color of my object starts changing. It becomes white when it goes at the top and uh, pink when it goes anywhere below zero. So if you're interested in changing the color of a primitive depending on how it's facing, this is one of the best ways. But what I'm interested in is pure zero or one values. So for that, I'm going to increase the complexity of the expression by adding an if statement. So let's go back to textport. Here I'll use the command x help and type in if. And as soon as I do that, you can see it gives me a simple explanation of what exactly or how I should use it. First, I need to give an expression which gives me certain values. If the value is true or the value is 1, do this. If the value is wrong or 0 or false or negative, do this. So here is an example. If the frame number is less than 12, use the frame number. If the frame number is greater than 12, use 75. So like this, I'm going to make use of the if statement along with the primitive. So here, let's go back to our expression editor. I'll just type in the if statement very briefly. So here, we have A being evaluated with B. And after that, if it's true, what should happen? And if it's false, what should happen? So first off, 
add a primitive value. I want to know if this is less than or equal to zero, which means if it's less than zero, it means it's facing the wrong direction. So this is my entire expression. I'll take this and put that instead of a and b. So if it's facing below, I wanted to tell yes, it is facing below. So that means one. And if it's facing upwards, this expression would be wrong. That will be false. So if it's false, I wanted to give me a value of zero. So one or zero only. I hit accept and immediately you should see the things have reversed. If it's facing up, it's now pink. And if it's facing down, it's white. Just because I've given the expression that way. Also, you can see that I have these two parentheses here. I'll just get rid of it. So my if statement is quite neat. Now, I have my if statement done, but having the if statement doesn't really do anything. I need to use this to isolate those particular primitives. So to do that, let me use a group node. I'll go ahead, add a group, connect that to my object. And under group, I'm going to tell group by expression. So I can use an expression to tell exactly what should happen. Also, I need to make sure that I'm grouping primitives. And here I'm going to tell this is reversed. So these primitives are the ones which are reversed. And the expression I want to use is nothing but this entire one. I'll copy the entire expression completely from beginning. And coming back to my group, I can just go paste the entire expression. And now once I've done this, you should see that this particular one which is facing downwards, the color is different. You can see here the color is pink, but now the color is different. It means this one is the one which is selected. Now, after it is grouped, I know the group is called reversed. I also have a SOP node called reverse. This helps us reverse polygons completely. So if I go back to my primitive, which is giving colors and attach this node, you can see things just reverse, they flip. So I can use this node for my group and this time I can go ahead tell only do reversal for the reverse group. So that means only if the normal is facing down, which is what this group is working with, reverse it so that it faces on the top. So now let's see exactly what we have done. I'll get rid of the primitive node. Lay out everything. We went ahead, drew our curves, each one facing different directions using clockwise and anti-clockwise directions. And also remember that the clockwise and anti-clockwise way of drawing polygons works in all softwares. Each one gives you polygons facing in different directions. I've gone ahead, merged them. And then in under grouping, I've grouped them depending on exactly how the normal is facing. Once I've done that, I'm using the reverse node only on that group so that the polygon is facing upwards. So to just evaluate whether or not this is working properly, I'll go ahead, use a transform, connect it to my uh, curve here at the top, coming back to my viewport, hitting enter so that my transform handle is visible. Start rotating one of the polygons. So you can see the normal is actually rotating along with the face. And once I reach a certain point where the normal becomes flat with the ground, it should flip. As you can see, it's flipping on the opposite direction. So the normal always has a positive Y value. So this is all I wanted so that my digital asset has things facing the right way. So this video was all about making sure uh, you know and understand about normals, how we can use expressions to isolate particular set of normals, and then also how to reverse them. So in the next video, I'm going to go ahead, just use the same method, reverse the normals and set them so that people can input their own curves or their own objects into my digital asset without breaking it. So that's it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys found it useful. I know it's a bit more expression heavy uh, as we are coming along. Uh, trust me, it is going to get a little bit more complex, but I really want you guys to stick with me for a little while. It gets easier as you use it more often. And uh, I'll be starting with a couple of uh, other Houdini tutorials uh, mostly related to architecture soon. I hope to see you guys at that time. So that's it for this video. Let me stop talking. I hope to see you in the next one pretty soon. Goodbye.